Welcome to Explorer Classroom. My name is Gina Borgia, and I am so glad you are joining us today. Here in the United States, we are celebrating Jewish American Heritage Month and Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. These varied groups of people have impacted local history, our communities today, and will continue to impact our world. To our viewers and explorers who identify as part of these groups, we see you and we celebrate you. At National Geographic, we believe that anyone can be an explorer and that you have the power to make a difference in the world, no matter how old you are. Explorer Classroom is here to inspire you with stories from the field and connect you with our National Geographic Explorers live to answer your questions. Today, we are joined by explorer Paul Salopek. Paul is a writer and journalist. He has traveled to more than 50 countries and has earned most of America's top print media awards. Paul is currently walking the pathways of the first humans who migrated out of Africa on a decade-long storytelling project called the Out of Eden Walk. But before we get into today's lesson and we hear from Paul, I'd like to welcome our registered viewers who join us from around the globe. Our special shout outs for today go to Southwest DeKalb High School, Wilson Middle School, SUNY Fredonia, Kearney High School, Savannah International School, Elgin High School, all the schools joining from the National Geographic Learning Cengage community, and all of our home, uh, home schools out there. We are so thrilled to have you here. And with that, we're going to get this Explorer Classroom started. So in a moment, we're going to connect to Paul, who will give us an update from his office on the trail in China. While you're watching, Paul was going to share about his project, the Out of Eden Walk. Think about your own journey. How far do you walk each day? And what are the stories you could tell? All right, now let's connect to Paul. Hello, this is Paul Salopek, and I'm a National Geographic explorer and a writer who is walking through the world in the footsteps of the ancestors who first walked out of Africa anywhere between 70 and 120,000 years ago. And my project is about storytelling. It's about learning and listening as we slow our lives down to the human pace of about three miles an hour to learn about the world around us, both the natural environment and also the human environment, cultures, in this day and age that is changing so quickly around us, right? Our world is a fast changing one. And I also use history to kind of be a distant mirror to learn how the world has changed and how much it's changed since the first ancestors walked through landscapes like this one. So 10 years ago, um, I set out from Ethiopia, one of the places in the world where some of the oldest human bones have been found, and began walking basically towards sunrise, towards the east, through the Middle East, Asia Minor, Central Asia, over the Himalaya Mountains, through the snows, down into the plains of India, and then now crossing mainland China, and uh, this country alone is going to involve a foot traverse from south to north of about 3,600 miles or 6,000 kilometers. And it's going to take me about two years. Okay, friends, we just heard from Paul that he started his journey in Ethiopia in 2012 and has since walked east through the Middle East, Asia Minor, Central Asia, the Himalayan mountains, India, and is currently crossing mainland China. I wonder, can you visualize this incredible journey? Let's trace his path on a map. We're going to pull up a map for you and let's have a look. So the green arrows that you see in the background, those trace the path of human migration out of Africa. And the red line, which represents Paul's path. So to the left, you'll notice the continent Africa, 
and the star on the left indicates the country Ethiopia, where he began his journey. And we're gonna trace that red line all the way to the right of the screen to the other yellow star, which is located in China near Beijing. That's how far Paul has walked. We'd love to hear from you. How many miles or kilometers do you think Paul has walked? YouTubers, you can share your answers right in the chat and on-screen guests, tell your teacher what you think. And teachers, you can type them right into the Zoom chat. I'll pause for a few minutes let, or for a few moments here and let's see what kind of great answers we have. So the question again is, how far in either miles or kilometers do you think Paul has walked thus far? I can see great conversation happening there in classrooms. Go ahead and type it into the chat. Let's see what kind of answers we have. Also waiting to hear from colleagues and see what's going on on YouTube. What do our YouTubers think? Okay, so I'm seeing seventh and eighth grade students from Belt High School are thinking 28,000 kilometers. I'm seeing 1,500 miles from Miss Needs Biology 10 class. Miss Anastasia is thinking 5,000 miles. Oh, these are great answers. I see them coming in from YouTube, 20,000 miles, 30,000 kilometers. All right, great work, friends. Miss Roberts' class in Southern Lee High School is thinking 34,382 miles. Very specific guess, fabulous. All right, so Paul has actually walked an estimated 12,500 miles, which is about 20,117 kilometers. Great work. There were some really close guesses. All right, now let's go back to Paul in the field. He's going to tell us more about his journey so that we understand why it's called the Out of Eden Walk and how he captures stories along his path. After that, we're going to take another YouTube poll. Andre, you can go ahead and connect us to Paul. Why out of Eden? Why that name? Because I'm thinking as a scientist that Africa, where we involved, is kind of our biological Eden, right? The garden that we all sprang from. And then we set out to explore the world. And I'm just following the footsteps of those wise hunter-gatherers to try to see the world a little bit through their eyes and to listen. It's a listening journey. And I'm already going on blah, 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 blah about a listening journey. So why don't we just listen for a little while? I try to document the conversation by taking notes. I do an interview. I ask that person about their life and about the issues in their country and their community, what's on their mind. And that's all part of this longer listening journey that stretches across entire continents. My tools are simple. I'm old fashioned. I use a pad, a paper, notebook, pen, a good ear an attentive eye, and lots of patience, right? Good things come to those who wait. Okay, so we just heard from Paul again, talk about why his walk is called Out of Eden and how he journals to share his own story as well as the stories of those he encounters on his path. So he mentioned that his tools are simple and that he uses the following, a pad of paper, a notebook, a pen, a good ear, an attentive eye, and lots of patience. So everyone watching today, have you ever thought about your own journey? What do you use to tell your story? We're gonna take a quick poll, both here in Zoom and on YouTube. You should see that popping up on your screen soon. What tools do you use for storytelling? Pick the option that best describes you. You should see, I'm like Paul, I like to use pen and paper, or, I love technology. I use my phone, tablet, or computer to write. Or I'm open to using both pen and paper or technology. What fits you both best? 
All right, on Zoom, I'm seeing 59% of you are open to journaling both with old fashioned pen and paper and technology. Only 9% so far like to use pen and paper like you, Paul. And about 32% saying, I love technology. I want to use that phone or tablet. And the best thing is all of these tools are great. A combination of, or just one, as long as you're writing down the story and getting the story out there, that's what's important. That was so much fun. All right, now let's, now let's hear about the people who join Paul on his adventure. Let's go back into the field. Andre, can you connect us? I also walk and work with what I call walking partners. Uh, the Out of Eden Walk would not even exist if it weren't for the human beings, the generous human beings who leave their daily life to come walk with me. And basically we discover their home landscapes together. And they have included camel shepherds and, and uh, from Ethiopia, Saudi soldiers, uh, photographers from Turkey, poets here from China. It's just been a, a fantastic group of people across the world. So I am walking here. We're, we're actually, this landscape, believe it or not, is on the outskirts of Beijing, the capital of China. And I'm walking with a friend from, who's come all the way from Washington, D.C., that's Rachel. And also with Liu Kan Kan, who has uh, been walking with me in several parts of China. And, 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 and these and Rachel, this is for students who are tuning in to explore a classroom. Hi. And Hello. they Hello. just uh, are wondering what we're doing out here, and how is it, and what does what does walking do for your line of work, your various lines of work? Well, it's it's uh, broadened my my experience because I've never been here, actually, the northern part of China. So it's it's my first time, and um, it's good. It's new. All right, and before we get into the next segment, I wanted to go back to our poll. We've heard from YouTubers about the tools that they use for storytelling, and I thought it would be interesting to share. 59% use both a combination of pen, paper, and technology, 22% solely technology, and 18% sticking with that pen and paper. It was about 27 votes, so thank you for sharing that. And of course, we love meeting some of Paul's friends and we're so glad that he doesn't have to walk alone, right? And to all of our audience joining today, we have one more question to ask before we meet Paul and kick off our question and answer portion. Think about who walks with you on your own journeys. Is it family members? Is it friends? From the following list, choose the group of people that are most involved in your current journey. Is it your family, maybe your friends? or classmates, community members, tell us what you think. All right, in Zoom, I am seeing 74% family members are who they're walking with on their journey, followed closely by friends, 26%. We'll wait to see if any YouTube results come in, but I wanted to thank you all so much for engaging with us and taking these polls. And of course, thank you, Paul, for bringing us into the field with you for an incredible look at your work. Thank you, Paul. And thank you to all the students and teachers watching. I hope you all join Paul on this mission. And you can continue to follow Paul on his journey at the Out of Eden Walk project page, which I've also linked in the chat and you're, you'll be seeing that on YouTube in a moment. Um, it's hard to believe, but there are only a few episodes of Explore Classroom left in this school year. So go ahead and register for the final events at natgeoed.org backslash Explore Classroom. And when you register, you can request a chance to be featured up here on screen with us. So fellow teachers, we've also created an interactive guide for you to share with your students to take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests. And you can find that Explorer Mindset in Action guide and a teacher edition linked in each registration page and in the chat also for you. 
I hope you have a great day, everyone. Stay curious and keep exploring. Thank you again, Paul, for being here. Do you have any final words? Keep walking, keep talking, keep listening. Wonderful. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us.